Ahoy, mateys, and welcome to our Out of the Park Baseball 24 playthrough of the Pittsburgh Pirates ending in a real-world save at the end of last season. So we started with the Rangers winning the championship, and we're going to sim through the offseason and start a 2024 season, see if we can get the Pirates into the playoffs, and I think we can. Um, to save a little bit of time, I've simmed a bunch of stuff and fixed some things. Um, primarily, my front office, as you can see here, my personnel. I've revamped this whole thing to make it a little bit better, and I didn't want to bore you with all those details, but you can get a quick look at the guys I have hired here. Um, Primarily, we also have a couple offers out for a new bench coach in Andrew McCutcheon, who retired in the offseason, and I decided to offer him a position as the bench coach and keep him around. We do have a pending offer for a new pitching coach. Main thing is we hired Chris Nathan as our scouting director, and we have him doing a bunch of stuff. He's scouting a bunch of free agents because our big issue as the Pittsburgh Pirates here is our pitching stinks. It is not good and primarily we need left-handed pitching um, and luckily we drafted Paul Skeens um, with the first overall pick in the draft so we have him coming into next year and I really think that that should be good for us. If you look at our pitching staff right here uh, Mitch Keller is probably the only guy we have here who's a reliable starter. Andre Jackson could develop. Bailey Falter and JT Brubaker are pretty fringe. Um, and we'll kind of let um, our spring training decide who is going to fill those spots. But my goal here is I think I was looking over my lineups. I like our situations at... Um, I'll actually sort by position here. I like our catcher situation. We have Henry Davis and Andy Rodriguez, and we also have Jason DeLay. Um, and I think DeLay is probably actually going to be my opening day starter at catcher, depending on how spring training does. But I think all three of those guys are viable options, both short-term and long-term for that position. So it's a great start. And also Henry Davis can play right field, as you can see there. Andy Rodriguez can play first and left, and we might develop that. Since we don't have McCutcheon, he could also be a DH for us. We have Connor Joe and Jared Triolo at first base, and Triolo has a bunch of positional variability here, which should be good long term. He's probably going to be our, like our super utility guy. Unfortunately, they're both righties, which I don't really like, but you know what can you do? They both should be able to produce at the pro level they did um, this most recent season. We also have Nick Gonzalez and uh, Lee Oliver Piguero um, at second base, as well as Ji Juan Bay, who's playing center field right now for some reason. Um, played most of last year at second base, though. And we'll see. He'll probably actually start center field for me this season, unless I can figure something out long term. I do like the way this is kind of set up right now. And we'll have O'Neill Cruz back which I think is going to be big for us. And, um, you know, everyone's really at league entry salaries except for uh, Key Brian Hayes and Brian Reynolds. And in this offseason, we're going to have to get a long-term contract for Brian Reynolds that'll probably be a little bit less favorable than the one he signed in real life. But we'll see how that goes. Pitching-wise, we do need to lock up Mitch Keller. I do want to keep him. We'll see what's going to happen with JT Brubaker. One thing that is unfortunate about this real-world save is that a lot of the injuries um, in real life did not carry over into this game. I'm not 100% sure why, but like Andy Rodriguez at this point um, will not be injured coming into the season because his winter ball injury did not happen. But conversely, um, if you look at our free agents here, I always struggle to find these screens right now, but I'll get used to it as I keep playing a little bit more. Um, we got switched all pitchers here. Brandon Woodruff is 100% healthy right now. Uh, that obviously not accurate. There's some other things like that as well going on, but we'll see how this goes. I've already set up a bunch of scouting reports for my scout 
which I think I showed you earlier, but we've scouted all these pitchers, primarily starting pitchers and starting with primarily lefty starting pitchers. I am assuming I'm going to sign one of these three guys to a contract, and I'm hoping to make it a moderately short term. I mean, it depends on the guy, but we're going to keep it in the 10 to $20 million range is my guess, closer to 10 if I can. High probability we're going to sign our oldest Chapman as well, which I think the Pirates did in real life this offseason. We'll probably be able to get him for a little bit less than they got him in real life. Um, but we definitely need a lot of help with our bullpen. It's pretty dire besides uh, David Bender. So I think our goal for this video is we're going to try and get through the offseason and sign those guys maybe lock a couple guys up to long-term contracts and we'll get ready for spring training in video two. Uh, just a quick little background on my experience level playing this game. Uh, I used to play out of the park baseball pretty consistently in the tens. Um, and I started a game as the Mariners that went about 20 to 30 years. I forget exactly how long it was on a different hard drive. Um, but I, you know, created a dynasty, won a bunch of World Series. It was great. And then I haven't played in about five to ten years, so there will be some stuff that's a little bit foreign to me, but I should be able to pick a lot of this up pretty quickly. And my main goal for the Pirates, why I wanted to be the Pirates instead of a team like, um, you know, I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area, so I could have been the Giants, I could have been... Um, the Toronto Blue Jays. I, I wanted to be the Pirates because, one, I think they have a good foundation, and two, I want to keep our payroll pretty low. So even though we are going to have a bigger budget than I think uh, we're going to use, I am always going to try and keep my player payroll in the bottom five teams. That's going to be kind of my role play through this game. So we're going to have to make some gritty decisions as this game goes on and uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I was kind of debating between the Pirates and the Rays and I decided the Pirates were going to be a more fun team, especially because they got Paul Skeens and we'll see if we can turn him into the white uh, Shohei Otani here, but we'll definitely focus more on him being a pitcher. So let's for the time being, we're going to um, just sim some days here. Get some Perfect. Andrew McCutcheon has signed on. Um, we got some scouting reports, and this is what I'm looking for uh, to see what kind of decisions we make. And we'll look at those a little bit. Like, see, already we, we're learning some stuff about Blake Snell here. He's even better than we thought. Um, even though everything is the same, for some reason he's a 3.5 instead of a 3, which makes sense because he's probably going to win the Cy Young, even though I did not vote for him, I voted for Spencer Strider, we got some weird trades going on, um, interesting, this is an absolutely terrible trade, so we're going to reject that, and we got a trade proposal from the Dodgers, Christian Romero, another terrible trade here. I don't want to get rid of Brian Reynolds. Yeah, I don't like that trade. We'll reject that. Even though Ben Sherrington. My assistant GM says do it. And let's continue to fast forward here a little bit. These are the guys that I'm interested in scouting reports. So nothing has changed for our guy Seth Lugo there. Um, Alex Reyes is actually worse than we initially thought. He's still got some good stuff. I think he could be someone we make a play on. Let's go check out Clevenger here. I don't really think Clevenger is a long-term solution. I really am interested in trying to get Kershaw for like a <clears throat> two or three year deal here.
nothing really stands out. Um, it's terrible for me on that scouting report. I'll continue to sim here a little. Read through these scouting reports. I'm really curious what he has to say about Montgomery when that comes up. So we're getting a little bit better. Huddy might be a guy that we look at. <clears throat> we received a trade proposal. Um, this is from Baltimore. We're going to get Weatherly in Van Loom. I don't want to do that, so I will reject it. And we have our oldest Chapman here. Absolutely no control, which is accurate. Interestingly, his movement is a little bit better. And he's good against both lefties and righties, which I like, especially with the new MLB rules of having to face three hitters. Yeah, he, I think he's definitely going to be a guy we're going to chase down here. Um, interesting. Jordan Westberg trade. What are they asking? And for Mitch Keller. Wow. This is um, an insane trade. Even though I like Mitch Keller, it's really hard to turn down getting Jordan Westberg here for... Um, Mitch Keller, I have no idea what the heck the AI is thinking here. Um, and yeah, he would be easily my everyday second baseman right now, um, which would make me feel a little bit better about Bay going out there. I really hate giving up Mitch Keller. I didn't want to give him up in this save. I really wanted to build some type of rotation around him, but I think we're going to have to accept that trade. Yeah, let's do it. Complete trade. What a bizarre way to start this game. All right. So we've gotten Jordan Westberg on the team. Second baseman. Let's go to our... Um, organization here. And we will assign... We're going to pop... Move players to the... Oh. I like just can't put them. I move players to the lower section of this page in order to remove them from waivers. That's what I'm trying to do. Do they just like stay there forever? Still figuring out the kinks. Sorry about that, guys. Um. Oh, by the way, if you haven't seen this yet, I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. I even got the cool Jack Sparrow facial hair. Um, so we're definitely going to steer this ship into uh, into disaster, is my guess. And we'll continue to sim. Now we're going to get some awards. Let's see who our great glove winners are. Because they're not golden glove winners. They're great glove winners. And that Mitch Keller thing actually really makes things a lot more interesting because now I think I have to sign three starting pitchers instead of two. My goal is two, and at least one of them being a lefty. Um, I don't really care about the great gloves, reliever of the years. I'm sure I know who's going to win reliever of the year. 
Uh, Michael Stefanik for Connor Joe and Eduardo Zapata. Um, hmm. Stefanik is good, even though my scouting report on him is a little low. Uh, but he is second, third, short. I don't really have a need for any of those. I think I'll just keep that the way it is and reject that trade. And I've received more trade proposals. Ooh, this is Ezekiel Duran. Wow. Holy moly. They're just really trying to get me to get rid of everyone. Ezekiel Duran could play left field, which is what Brian Reynolds plays right now. And what does the OSA have to say about him? The OSA loves him too. Let's do a uh, compare player to Brian Reynolds and see. This is another really bizarre trade that I, again I would hate to give up Brian Reynolds. And a, one reason that I would hate to give him up, besides um, the believability of all of this, is he is a switch hitter, which I like a lot. <clears throat> but it's hard to argue that the better player here is not Duran. Obviously his potential is a lot better right now and even um, head to head they're kind of even even though his uh, eye in avoiding strikeouts isn't great. It could improve and McCutcheon is going to be good at developing that. <clears throat> He's a little bit of a better base runner as well. Man, this is kind of crazy. This also saves me a bunch of money, too, because Duran um, would not need a new contract for a while if I go back to him. I don't even think he's arbitration eligible yet. Yes. Oh, wow. Hmm. This is another one that I feel like we just got to do it. Um, even though I really wanted to keep Brian Reynolds. And there's uh, some weird AI trades. Um, fans are upset that we let Brian Reynolds go, understandably. But we got Ezekiel Duran, so don't worry about it, guys. It's going to be great. It's going to be great, trust me. Uh, let's just continue to reviewing our depth charts here. Um, I'm going to do ask our bench coach for all depth charts and lineups. I'm curious what he's doing here. He's putting Jordan Westberg as our designated hitter. Which is interesting. I guess we need to assign um, Duran, right? Man, what a weird start to this save. Complete. I had planned on so many different things than what just happened right there. Um, organizational roster. Lineups back to lineups. Um, ask for all depth charts and lineups. So we got our everyday second baseman now is Pagiera. Duran's playing left, which I assumed was going to happen. And Connor Joe is at DH. Where the heck is Westberg? Westberg's playing second against lefties, but not against righties. Is he really that bad against righties? He's wor There's no way he's worse than Pagiero. I'll... I'll let Andrew McCutcheon manage the team. We'll let it happen for right now. Um, we also got to ask him for our pitching staff. And we will continue to play. <clears throat> Some arbitration decisions. 
none of which are very good for me, especially this JT Brubaker one. That's absolutely brutal. But what can you do? All right, and here we go. Free agency, and let's see if we give some interesting um, international free agents here we got. No, 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 no. Oh, this is Fumiaki Kimura is a left-handed closer who is only 24 years old. He's got a fastball and a curveball. I'll do a scouting report on him. We also have Jorge Espinoza, Frank Flores, really original names here. So nobody good except for this guy. Um, and let's actually... Ooh, we've got more scouting reports. This is the one that I'm most interested in. So Jordan Montgomery is not... Needs. He does have five pitches, which I like, but... If we look at this guy's contract, let's offer him a contract. That's a lot of money for what he is offering, even though he's coming off, um, I mean, in, in theory, if you look at all these numbers down here, they're all, they're all very good, so, he could be that good, it's hard to say, maybe my scout's an idiot, uh, Brandon Woodruff is also very good, and he is out there, and let's just actually go, this is the other one I really wanted to see, was the Frankie Montas scouting report. no real new information on him. Trevor Bauer. Man, wouldn't that be something? If they didn't hate me after signing Reynolds, they'll hate me after getting Trevor Bauer, I'll tell you that much. Jordan Hicks. Decent potential here. Good stuff. Good movement. Decent control. We'll see what kind of money he's looking for. Let's head out to free agency and see what some of these guys want money wise. We'll start with Blake Snell, and I'm sure he's looking for, yeah, some 20 something million dollar contract. Snellzilla. I've never once heard Snellzilla in my life, but apparently that's what he's looking for. Let's offer contract to Shohei. Oh, wow, Shohei is actually interested. I thought he was going to be completely uninterested at all, and unfortunately I can't offer him $2 million a year and then $55 million 75 years from now. I don't think that kind of structure is built into this game, unfortunately. Um... All right, what's Frankie Montas looking for? Frankie's looking for a one-year, $10 million. That's about what I was hoping to pay for him, so I actually do really like that. Jordan Hicks is looking for two years around $6 million a year. That's actually quite good. Daniel Hudson looking for one year around three point four. Let's go find Aroldis Chapman first, and it'll be easy because we'll just search by stuff. Uh, let's offer him a contract first. 4.4 mil a year is what he's looking for. Let's offer him 3.5 and see if he takes that. He does. Boom. Got it. Um, the other guy I was kind of interested in. What's Liam Hendricks looking for, actually? 3 years, 4.8 mil a year. Hmm. I could go either way on that right now. Josh Hader is not looking for $20 million a year, like in real life. So we got that going for us. What's Woodruff looking for? Pretty long-term contract. Let's go find Clayton Kershaw. That's, I think, the one that we do want to make an offer on. 17.6 average. Let's do... Um, 15 mil, and then we'll make that last. 
112. Did not like that offer. So we'll back off of him for a second. Let's see what Jordan Montgomery wants. At 30 years of age. <clears throat> what can I do? 10. 10. 12 and 14. He likes it. Let's submit that. I do like that as an offer for Jordan Montgomery. That would be one of my pitchers. Sorry, I'm editing a gigantic organization chart Excel document I have under the assumption that I'm actually going to get these guys. So let's make an offer on Montas too. We'll do we'll do eight five. We'll start there and see what he likes about that. Did not like that at all. How about? 10. 10 even. He's fine with that. I'm fine with that. We'll submit it. That's two guys that we have coming in now. Possibly. We'll finish today, see what happens. Alright, so trade proposals. Clayton Kershaw is signed with the Mets. That makes sense. Bummer. Um, Anthony Gutierrez and Wilson, Winston Santos. I definitely don't want to get rid of Bednar, so I'm going to reject that outright. Um, let's check out league news and see who's signed. So Sean Mananananananaya has signed with the Phillies two years. Um, Domingo Herman has signed with the Giants. Clayton Kershaw, of course, made that deal. Um, I think the rest of this is just Eduardo Rodriguez, Nelson, Jock Peterson, Matt Chapman. That is actually not that bad of a deal. All right, so we made it through day one. Let's see what day two looks like. More trades. As we examine what is going on, so many trades. No signings, just trades. Do one more day here. Mitch Garver to the Giants. All right, let's go back to transactions and see how people are feeling over here. Um, so still nothing for Brandon Woodruff. No one's offered anything there. Um, I think I have about three relief spots, and I've only offered one right now, which was to Chapman. Let's see what Daniel Hudson would be interested in. His expectations bullpen, which is great. Let's do 275. All right, so that's fine making sure I'm staying with a budget here. Doing some math, give me a second. this nonsense I still have um, about 40 million dollars left to spend to stay within my self-imposed budget of 80 million dollars um, let's
let's fast forward one more day here. We've gotten another trade proposal, and it's for Bednar, so I'm going to definitely say now. Um, I would very much like one of these guys to respond to me. No one's saying anything. They're all so stoic. And I think is that the end of 2023, we've officially headed into the new year. And we're still no closer to anyone responding to me. Let's see if anyone has signed here. League news. Hmm. More just trades, which is a lot for me to go over. I'll look through them and outside of the video, and I'll let you know if anything really exciting happened here, or you can just pause it every single one that I just clicked on there. January 2nd, and we're still just waiting, waiting, waiting. January 3rd, answer me. Sign my contract. Make you walk the plank if you don't. Hmm. That boy would be interesting. Another trade proposal. Work for Bednar. Terrible, leave me alone. I just go mark him like untradeable right now, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Mail and news for update from Frankie Montas. I will probably be finalizing. So that doesn't seem very excited about it. <clears throat> Another terrible trade. Reject. Man, nobody is responding to me. Oh, here we go. Another trade proposal. Also for David Bednar. Leave me alone. Trade options. Trade is untouchable. There we go. Just because I'm so sick of looking at trades for him. Let's go back to our free agent list here. People are getting signed. Um... Just scrolling through to see if there's anyone on my list. I kind of want to... Let me check out the batter situation here. Sort of by overall. I kind of want to sign like a depth catcher. Maybe even Travis Darno could be an interesting option just to give me a little bit more wiggle room at the catcher position Gary Sanchez would be another guy I don't think I have great scouting on any of these guys but what kind of contract is yeah that's a little more than I'm willing to spend that's definitely more than I'm wanting, willing to spend on him. What's J.D. Martinez looking for? Oof. He's good, though. Whit Merrifield would be a good utility guy to have. Play second in any outfield position. Nine mil a year is not un inconceivable for him. Let me do a scouting report on Whit. Um, also do one on Austin Meadows, get him back in the Pirates organization, right? We'll do a request a scouting report on him. What kind of contracts are you looking for here? That's not too bad. Hmm. Any names jump out at you? 
I feel like we're not going to get to spring training here. So if you want to leave a comment in the video on any of these free agents that you would like to see join the Pirates organization and don the eye patch, let me know. Oh, there's an interesting one. I think I just missed Charlie Blackman. That would be interesting. I had no idea how old he was until I was doing some research for this coming baseball season. Um, he would definitely be our designated hitter. What is he looking for? Not bad at all. I'll um, do a request scouting report on him. We're just pretty set right now, all things considered. The only position I really feel strongly about upgrading would be first base or possibly even center field. Kiermaier would be an interesting guy to do that with. It's, again, that's a little bit more money than I'm looking to spend. But I'll do a scouting report on him. Why not? <clears throat> we'll finish the day. Got a couple scouting reports back, I believe. We have Daniel Hudson is the best one, even though it's taken like a month for him to tell me that. This Kimura guy, we have a scouting report on him, and he is actually just as good as we thought. Maybe I should offer him a contract. It's kind of a lot of money, especially for a guy who's never pitched in the pros. But let's go back to his arsenal. It's that fastball and a curve. Both are plus plus pitches. 97 to 99. And he's a ground ball hitter. All this is pretty good. All this is promising. Uh, I have it within my budget, so I'm just going to go ahead and try and bite. We'll do three. We'll start at three. And we'll just do escalating by the year. Ask for response. Perfect. <clears throat> Not a bad play on this guy. Back to news and notes. Jordan Montgomery likes my deal. Aroldis Chapman likes my deal. Kimura likes my deal. Winter meetings begin and the draft lottery has been announced. The Royals have won. Good for them. And we have officially signed Daniel Hudson to a $2.75 million deal. The amateur free agent signing period. Maybe I should end the video here because this is actually going to be tons of fun. And ooh, we got Jesus Soto. Juan Soto's younger brother, Jesus. I'm sure everything I just said there is factually incorrect, but it's more fun if you make it up, right? Uh, none of these guys are standing out to me, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I'm going to do quick scouting reports on all these guys that are very high. We'll target some pitchers here in a second, too. And then... Without showing you guys the scouting reports, um, let me know if you think any of these guys are worth pursuing in my offseason here, too. Ernesto Denia would be my last option here. Jesus Cervantes. Let's do... I think I just got some Steam messages in this video, so hopefully I just doxed someone. Request scouting report. Request scouting report. You can never have too many lefty pitchers, so... We'll check out this guy, too. Luis Patino. Um, manager's office. News and mail. All right. I think I'm actually going to end it there. So, again, if you uh, 
or interested in any of these international free agents, any other free agents that I haven't pres gone after yet that you're interested in, let me know, and we'll get to um, we'll get to the spring training, and I'll hopefully play through spring training, and hopefully Paul Skeens will be the greatest pitcher to ever live. Um, and if not, this is going to be a, a tremendous failure of a playthrough series. But hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, Captain Jack Sparrow Episode 1, and we'll see you uh, for Episode 2.